the that let let's just say the Red Sox and the Astros could wind up in the wild card game. Okay. That's ridiculous. That's two of the best four teams in baseball could be in the wild card game. In okay. fact, probably two of the best three teams in baseball because I don't think I don't think there's a National League team that competes with with any of the top four teams in the American League. Yeah, but you can't do the comparison, Tim. You know that. So why not? Because it's <laughs> it, that's the way baseball is set up. You, you know, you're not going to say, "Well, this year we're going to," you know, it's like what I was just talking about with interleague play. You, you, you know, I I don't want it every year. If you imagine you would say, "Okay, the th- the fourth team is from either league." All I know. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that, that they shouldn't have a National League team in the playoffs. I'm not saying that at all. But my point being that if you look at the teams, Milwaukee right now, the Milwaukee Brewers have the best record in the National League. All right, you probably couldn't name two players on the Milwaukee Brewers. Nope. So that's my point. The Milwaukee Brewers are the only National League team that is playing 600 ball. There are five teams in the American League playing over 600. Okay. So that that is my point. If, if maybe because good, they beat up on all the National League well, teams, good for good for the National League that there's more parity in that league and that there's going to be pennant races. I can tell you right now who the five teams are that are, that are going to make the American League playoffs. Right now, I can tell you. I mean, it, it, it's not it's not even a mystery. Do you want me to ask you? The Yankees. Okay, let Reds, me let me ask it, brother. Who do you think is going to be in the, the, it's the not, top it's five? It's not teams? who I think. It's who I know. The Yankees, the Red Sox. The Cleveland Indians, the Houston Astros, and the Seattle Mariners. Those are the five teams that will be in the American League playoffs. If you okay. look at the standings, it's 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 absurd how one sided the American League is for those five teams. Okay. Nobody else even has a shot. The Tampa Bay Rays just got a game over five hundred. They're in third place in the American League East. A game over five hundred. The Yankees are playing or have are what, fifty eight and twenty nine, and the Red Sox are sixty two and twenty nine. So they're basically even. Okay. They're basically even in the loss column. So, you know, the Red Sox just have a couple. Couple have played a couple more games. That and and, and the, the Astros and the, and the Mariners are going going at it neck and neck in the same way in the American League West. But like I said, two of those two of those four teams are going to wind up in a wild card game. Okay. So let's quickly talk uh, before we take a break. Uh, only one Met was chosen for the All Star. Game, uh, Jacob DeGrom. Uh, Good for the Gromer. Uh, fortunately, not a traded New York Met um, <laughs> because I did not want him traded. and I, Not before the All-Star game, anyway. Uh, well, there's no reason to trade him. I, I You know what? Uh, I, right now, I feel so I, bad for him because he, I really the Mets couldn't, can't support him. I really couldn't disagree more with you on that. I, and I, not, not because I want him to come to the Yankees, because I do. I would like to see Jacob DeGrom on the Yankees. But the Mets... The Mets are. Do you realize how bad the Mets are right now? Right now, the Mets are horrible. The Mets have the fewest wins in the National League. The entire right. league. I know. We're talking about the league with the Miami Marlins in. I know. It. All right, the Marlins who 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 cut payroll by what, like eighty million dollars or something, like yep. ridiculous number like that. Their their payroll is somewhere around sixty or seventy million dollars. They have more wins than the Mets do. It, it's embarrassing. It's an embarrassing, and especially after eleven and one start, it's even worse if you think of it that way. You can't trade Degrom. I'll tell you why. I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. Tell was, me why. Is the fact that when Tom Seaver was traded, the Mets went into uh, wandering through the desert thing for six years until they got Dwight Good. Wandering through the desert. What does that even mean? They were horrible. They just I'm didn't to say they were horrible no, because I'm trying to be colorful. You. Oh. You, what, you, 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 what, you, you're stop the writer. Being colorful. You're the writer. Stop oh, being you're, you're being too colorful there, Rob. Stop, I, I, blah, blah, stop, blah. stop being colorful, all right? No, I am colorful. I'm Ugh. a colorful person. Anyway, uh, Brandon Nimmo was snubbed. Um, uh, I can see why. You know, the, it's partly because it's the Mets. Nimmo, Nimmo doesn't have outstanding numbers. He's played well this season. Don't get me wrong. Right. But he doesn't have outstanding numbers. Well, that's why you wouldn't put him on. His His... His best number is OPS, okay, which is on base percentage plus slugging. And with that, he is second among National League outfielders, which is impressive. But if you look at his overall numbers and you add in or you you factor in home runs and RBIs, he's not an All Star. And I know Met fans are upset about that because Nimmo's kind of come out of nowhere this season. But it's not like he's come out of nowhere and he's got 20 home runs and 50 RBIs. Right. He right. doesn't. He's got like 12 home runs and 30 RBIs. Yeah. I mean, the rest of his numbers besides the OPS are pretty pedestrian. So 
I mean, Met fans, look at look at your record. Look at where your team is, and and please don't complain about not. No, having, I'm having I, all-star I'm happy Jacob, Jacob Degrom. Degrom's in there. I, he I should know. be Jacob Degrom probably should start the game. That would be a, a nice as, thing. as as well as he's pitched this year. His his, his you know wins loss numbers and 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 though his you know, ERA that, is incredible. His ERA is unbelievable. He he's striking guys out. He he's been fantastic this season. And and the only reason that he doesn't have a dozen wins already is because a the Mets' offense is terrible, and b the Mets' bullpen is worse. And of course, they decided to still take him out after five or six innings. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a break right now. You're listening to from the press box right here at ninety point three WHPC. If you'd like to make a comment or a suggestion, give us a call five one six five seven two seven four four zero. This program is brought to you by Nassau Community College, which is a testing site for both the college-level exam program, CLEP, and DSST exams. Summer's a great time to earn some extra credits, study at the beach, and then take your 90-minute exam at Nassau. Colleges and universities through the country use these exams to award credits through associates and bachelor's degrees. The New York State Department of Education accepts CLEP exams for teacher certification, and the New York City teachers take CLEP exams to increase their knowledge and their income. Anyone can take a college-level exam, but make sure sure your school or employer will accept the exam and what score is required for awarding credit. Last year, over 10,000 New Yorkers earned college credits with CLEP. Spanish is the most popular exam in New York. Always check with an academic advisor before registering for any exams. For more information, call 516-572-9947 or visit ncc.edu slash CLEP. Like, like, oh, I love that. Like, like. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just on Facebook. Like, like, what are you liking? I don't even know. I'm just mindlessly hitting like because, well, I just don't know. At least like something that's worth actually liking. Like what? Like the new 90.3 WHPC page on Facebook. Oh, I like that. Search for 90.3 WHPC on Facebook and join the conversation happening right now on the voice of Nassau Community College. Like, like, yes. Like 90.3 WHPC on Facebook. I do like that. As I was saying, like 90.3 WHPC on Facebook. From the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. It's now easier to listen to the voice of Nassau Community College on your phone. Stay connected to your favorite radio station anywhere you go on the iHeartRadio app. Never miss shows like the Nassau Morning Madhouse, It's Saucy, or the Radio Rumble Again. Streaming 24-7. 365. Listen to WHPC everywhere. iHeartRadio is radio and unlimited music all in one app. Listen live now in the iHeartRadio app and at iHeartRadio.com. Just search for 90.3 WHPC. Welcome back to From the Press Box right here on 90.3 WHPC. Give us a call, 516-572-7440. I'm Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. And don't forget to go to our website, nccradio.org. Find out about all the great programming we have here at WHPC. Uh, Let's talk uh, World Cup, brother. Absolutely. Because um, I am shocked. I'm just reading this. On SportingNews.com, Michael McCarthy, it says here that the 2018 World Cup, the audience, the TV audience, is some of the biggest ones they've had like since 1990. Not surprising. You know? It had uh, 5.6 million viewers, Croatia over Russia. How about that? Um, that's, a, that's an incredible amount of people watching soccer. So, it, you know. it it just goes along. This, the num- first of all, the numbers for soccer have been going up over the last few years. Right. This, this is, this no, is, well, this one, is of reason, one of the reasons I say that is not because it's soccer, even though I, I might have that prejudice. I'm, I'm talking about the fact that the games are on early in the day. You know, there's no prime time watching on this. Ten and two. Yeah. You, you, but usually, you know, television wants, television sports wants their stuff in the, um, you know, in the uh, evening. Wow. Well. You know, can't do that since Russia is what six hours uh, ahead of us. But it's it's something to maybe. think about. Know. You know, when they talk about oh, we can't have uh, World Series games on during the day. 
Well, guess sure what? They, sure they can. <laughs> well, you know, it's about you money, but I would I would love to see based on this that maybe say, well, maybe date. You know what? People that are up, I know people at work that you know, or you know, they stop in and they watch the game for twenty minutes at a time. Yeah. So that's, either or or a lot of people also work from home nowadays, so it's yeah. not even a matter of going into the office and you put the game on while you're working. Right. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, a lot of people. Like you said, they, they'll work, watch in, in a break room or they'll watch on their computer at work or, you know. Well, they're kinda, handheld. There's, there's so many different ways to watch now. And soccer, slowly but surely, is, is gaining a bigger foothold in, in this country. And well, I, I think so, but I also, let's not jump ahead. You know, we've seen this before with soccer in this country, uh, women's soccer and men's soccer, especially women's soccer since they actually won it. Uh, they were saying, "Oh, okay, you know, women's soccer is going to be big now," and you know, you know, no one, no one's watching it's, it on Lifetime. I'm sorry, like, like, like I said, it's it's a, the numbers for television for soccer have gone up over yeah. the last few years. It's not just the World Cup. Obviously, there's going to be a spike with the World Cup, even with the time difference from Russia. Sure. But and and this this has been an outstanding World Cup. It's been it's been there's been a lot of drama. There have been significant upsets. You're talking about Brazil is out now. Germany didn't get out of the group stage. Uh, Argentina is, is, was was a round of 16 loser. Um, Portugal with, with Cristiano Ronaldo certainly wasn't a favorite to win a tournament or anything. But he's one of the, if not the most well-known name in the world. So people know Portugal and they follow Ronaldo. This World Cup has had, I don't want to say everything, but a lot. And... The fact that there are now four European teams left, I think, helps the ratings because the players who are left are, while while they might not be household names here, anybody who follows soccer in this country knows a lot of the names that are still left. Sure. Because these guys, for the most part, play in the Premier League in England or they play in, in La Liga in Italy or they'll play in Spain or they'll play in Germany. That For those those four leagues... Are, are the most followed leagues in the world, and a lot of those players are still left. So that's what you're looking at. And there's the familiarity part of it. And I, I think that's what's what's driving ratings for the most part at this point. I think the games have been good. There's been a lot more Great scoring games. than you maybe you think. Um, you know. it's, not, it's not even so much about the scoring. I mean, Russia, Russia and Croatia was a really good game. And it wound up finishing 1-1 after 90 minutes. Both teams scored in overtime, and then they went to penalty kicks, which I still can't stand as a way to settle a game, but it was exciting. And you wouldn't believe how many comments that I heard. I was watching, you know, watching commenting on Facebook with friends. You wouldn't believe how many people were like, Putin has the ref. Putin's got, Putin has, they, they kidnapped the ref's family and watch Russia's going to win because the ref is going to make a call. And that's what people were saying about the last game when Russia won because they weren't expected to win. And, there was a lot of that going around. Yeah, I know some of your a friends lot. on uh, on Twitter and Facebook, and maybe they shouldn't be saying that, but you know, it is what it is. Putin only likes uh, doing U.S. elections. So. Well, but you know, so but Russia obviously getting to the quarterfinals was a huge surprise, and, right. and one of the stories of the, to- of the tournament, uh, totally unexpected. But they almost wound up getting to the semifinals. You're talking about one save in, in the penalty kicks, and otherwise Russia would have been in it instead of Croatia. Yeah, yeah. So now we have Belgium and France, and that game is uh, tomorrow, I believe. Let me just double-check my schedule here. Uh, uh, yeah, Tuesday. France-Belgium, 2 o'clock tomorrow, and the other side is England and Croatia, and that game is Wednesday at 2 o'clock. My, one of my problems right now, and, it, and I don't know – if they could have arranged it. But you have Wimbledon and the World Cup at the same time. Right. Come on, someone you know, if I'm Wimbledon, I move it. You can't move you can't move either one. Sure you can. These are summer events. How are you gonna move Wimbledon? They've been playing at the same way at the same time for hundred and ten years. No, they haven't. They is. used to uh, end it on July fourth. Wow. And now it it goes on. And I would I would have you know, because you have this world looking at these two events, and they're both good events, and you maybe can't, you know, pay attention to both at the same time, you know? My my man Bill Buell, who used to be a tennis writer for the Schenectady Gazette when I worked upstate, I was talking to him the other day, and he said, 
He said, so what do you think about Wimbledon so far? And, I'm, and I said to him, I kind of deadpan. I said, when is it? <laughs> you know, you know. I-